Hi everyone, Miranda Patron here with you to do another video to show you how to bend your dotting tools. So I did one of these a long time ago and I apparently it has fallen by the wayside in the YouTube land of Neverland out there in the middle of nowhere. So I decided to kind of freshen it up a little here and show you again how you can bend your own dotting tools. I have been selling them in my Etsy shop, but frankly with the tariffs overseas and other places I've had three orders that have not come in um, so I've had some issues with getting the tools to bend for you so I'm gonna show you again <laughs> how to bend your own dotting tools for dot art so the wood sets like these are a little bit more challenging just because if you're too rough on them the wood will crack and then you end up with a broken one that falls out and then it's not very useful. So you have to be gentle with them and sometimes you can hold the needle nose pliers down here and then grip them with another set of pliers at the other end and bend that way. But I just want to say the best ones for bending are not the wood. <laughs> so with that being said, we're going to push those out of the way. It seems to me that a lot of you have this set of dotting tool. So I figured this would be the best set to show you on since a lot of people have these ones for their dot art. Now you can do these with your own. I just want to say as a disclaimer though, they do break as well. <laughs> so if you are too rough, too strong, the ball ends will break off, which is actually how I made my etcher years ago. So a lot of you know I have this one that I can't find now, but I broke the end off it by accident and it has actually made it the smallest dotting tool I have, which is very handy. And I also sketch designs into stones with it that way. But if you don't want an etcher, <laughs> then I suggest to be very gentle so you don't break the ball end off. Okay, so the most difficult one on this set is gonna be this green one here. So I'm gonna start with the most difficult and just get that done and out of the way. <laughs> then it's a little bit easier to to show you so I have a set of these adjustable ones but I also have gripper pliers and another set that I can do this with but I don't use the needle nose ones because they break these off a lot easier the larger ball so I just grip it in the grippers like this and I give it a little bit of space but not too far down because if you go too far down it's gonna crack this because you're grabbing the heavy part of the metal and this one is, you're really going to have to grip it tough and put a little pressure here on your dotting tool so you're kind of bracing the metal in the plastic so that it doesn't, it doesn't break as easily. And then you're going to have to give it a good squeeze <laughs> and then bend it. So you can adjust it to however steep an angle you wish. For your bend, I'm um, for your bend, yeah, the angle on your bend, but for your tool, just I wouldn't keep doing it back and forth, back and forth, because then that decreases the integrity of the metal as well, and you'll end up breaking it again. <laughs> so, I appreciate that a bunch of you are supporting my art and purchasing these because you just want to support me, but you can bend them yourself. But also, you know, if your hands aren't strong enough, sometimes that's an issue too. So I will continue to make these for people who would like them because I didn't realize there was such a, a need for them. So I will continue as soon as I get the other orders in. They're telling me May 26th, but that's, <laughs> that is today. So I don't know that they're going to be coming on Memorial Day weekend, but we'll see. So this is the other end of this one. Now this end, you can use the same gripper large pliers, but... If you have a pair, if you do um, any sort of jewelry work, these are needle nose pliers. And these will work as well. So you just, I put it in there about a quarter of an inch of the way down. And then I just use the actual plier. See how, I don't know if you can hear that click. You can kind of feel it get leverage. Um, and once you get that leverage, squeeze the pliers and then just kind of angle it down. Like that. Now with these ones too, if you do happen to pull one out, like on the wood, I know I said, you know, it's pretty disappointing that this 
is broken, but I'm going to try some super glue and wood glue mixed to relieve this one, to revive this one. It might be lost. We never know. I hate throwing things out though, so I'm going to try to fix it. But with these ones, you can actually, if they come out, just put a little bit of super glue down into the hole. Let me see. This one is a broken one. So you can see it'll leave a hole where the metal peg goes in. And you can just pour some super glue down in it and kind of swirl it around a little bit and then let it dry and it will preserve the integrity. You will have it, it'll, it'll dry and it will be all right to use. So, so yes, yeah, so you can do that with the whole set of these tools. This blue one, see they start at like three millimeter size and the next one down is like this. So I would still use the gripper pliers to do that. Just because that way too you can kind of see easier if it's starting to crack. You can also see if you've if you're gonna break off the ball. You'll get a feel for it too. I mean I've done a bunch of these now and quite frankly throughout the time of surgery and whatnot, my husband helped me do some as well. So we gotta enlist my family as the team here for our little mini business. Especially with Two girls homeschooling. My oldest is going to college at 15 next year. Super exciting. And our youngest daughter has some special needs, so she'll be going to an excellent school as well in our area. So we're very excited that uh, I will be partially homeschooling and partially special needs with her. But then, of course, we have the lovely Giuseppe, who's always running around trying to be involved in the studio. So, but I will definitely still be around. So I'm just going to show you again on these, these, the smaller end ones, you don't have to be as aggressive with them. So it just depends on how far you would like your bend. And a lot of people ask me what the purpose of this is, bending the tools, but I have to say, initially, you all know me and I love my angled paintbrushes, which is kind of what inspired me to do this was the Princeton brush that's already angled. I did not bend them this way. However, I have bent some of my own paint brushes that have a hollow ferrule, the same way I just showed you how to do the dotting tools. You could do that too, but if it's um, a decently made brush like this goes, is solid all the way up through so that have some, it's a lot sturdier. So it's not hollow. I wouldn't have been able to bend this one. So I bought it that way, but the reason I really like these, which I just want to impart that onto you, is that when I'm dotting, especially for the videos, I can see so much better the placement of where I'm putting the dots. Um, I know I'm getting older, my eyes are starting to go, so I'm sure some of you have the same problems that I do. <laughs> and there's got to be other people out there with a need because I got a lot of feedback from you all on my Facebook page saying, hey, I would like some of those as well. So. Um, it's a good reason, I think, to be able to see what you're doing, especially dot work. You know, we can get really small with some of these dots. They're just amazingly tiny. And to be able to see where you're placing your paint and how much it's spreading, um, I think in anything, it's fantastic to be able to see what you're doing. So that being said, um, I will leave you all with that. But take heart. As soon as I get more back. I will be putting more in the shop if you don't want to try your own or you don't have the tools to do your own um, or you don't want to break your own <laughs> or the strength in your hands. So I totally understand um, that there is still a need for this. So I just wanted to put this out there for those of you who um, have all of the above, the tools, the pliers, the, the dotting tools and um, the capability and, and want to do this, then this is a good instructional way I think to show you that it is not impossible to do so and it doesn't take any special machinery it's just the pliers and needle nose pliers and then there are other pliers besides this type that will grip down that are adjustable and you can find them in jewelry stores or craft shops anything like that so I'm sure Amazon has everything if I find a link for that I'll post it in the description for y'all too but like I said, it's it's not impossible. You can do it, and I'm more than happy to show you all what I can with all the things that I, I do. I'm, I'm more than happy to share it with you all. So that being said, I'll let you go here, but I also just wanted to reiterate my thanks to you all. You all have been awesome, and uh, 
I'm really blessed to be a part of this art community. <laughs> if you are looking for more examples of using the tools, I have videos here on my YouTube. Uh, if you're new to my YouTube channel, feel free to subscribe. I have lots of videos showing how to use the dotting tools with painting. Um, beginner designs all the way up to more complex designs and uh, also working with the brushes. So you can check that out. Just subscribe and uh, say hi throughout the chat every now and then or throughout the um, comments. All right, everybody. I hope you have an awesome day and I will talk to you all again real soon. Take care.